serving up stories from the lacrosse field. Brought to you by Lacrosse Magazine. Produced by U.S. Lacrosse. On the eve of the NCAA Division I Women's Lacrosse Championship, Brittany Poist applied some impromptu ink to each of her legs. This is Respect is Earned. I actually got that uh, from my boyfriend. He played at Messiah College and it always just, he's encouraged me to play every minute wanting to earn that respect. And this is Acts 2021. I get a daily verse on Facebook and that was the day of the Final Four and it was about completing the work that God's like put in your life. And I felt like that the national championship was completing that, so we had to keep fighting to get there, and it was just a reminder, so that's my ink. For Poist and the Maryland Terrapins, the fight had only begun. The Terps seeking their first national title since 2001 trailed Mighty Northwestern, the five-time defending national champ, 6-0, just nine minutes into the game. Smith, six, nothing, Northwestern. But by game's end, after one of the most memorable comebacks in NCAA championship game history, Maryland raised the trophy in tribute to its 10th national title. One dynasty dethroned, another restored. Terps head coach Kathy Reese won two NCAA championships as a player in College Park, alongside Wildcats head coach Kelly Amonte Hiller. It's amazing. You know, I was able to win national championships as a player and assistant coach and now head coach. And I'm just so proud. I'm so proud to be a Terp. So proud to represent Maryland, so proud to coach this group of young women. I think it's tougher to stay at the top. I think that, um, you know, just to get your players to understand the importance of, you know, every practice, every possession, every play, um, you know, when it comes down to a setting like this, it matters. And if you don't work hard in practice, or, you, you know, you're casual, and so it translates, and I think that, um, you know, we'll, we'll definitely go back to the drawing board and, and uh, be ready. I know that doesn't help out our seniors, but they certainly had a tremendous career. I'm not proud of them. It looked like Northwestern would roll to its sixth straight title as Shannon Smith, Danielle Spencer, Aaron Fitzgerald, and Brooke Matthews combined to stake the Wildcats to a 6-0 lead early. We started to get a little casual when we were up 6-0 and uh, they made us pay. Maryland regrouped and at one point went on its own seven goal run, capped here by Brandy Jones with 1957 remaining. Back came Northwestern. Smith assisted one goal and scored another to tie the game and set up an epic finish in front of nearly 10,000 screaming fans in Towson, Maryland, the largest crowd to ever watch a women's lacrosse game in the United States. We prepared by putting up speakers at our outdoor facilities of one of our basketball games, I guess when they were playing Duke, because I kept hearing that repeated on the loudspeakers. Um, and there was an echo and it was just so loud and we thought the entire time it could never be this loud in an outdoor arena. And it was. <laughs> we were fully prepared as a result of uh, our coaches planning in that way. And uh, I think it helped us on defense because we continued to talk regardless of the noise and we learned to actually listen, which I think was a key point for us because listening is the biggest part on defense, not just talking. National Player of the Year candidate Caitlin McFadden in a showdown with Northwestern counterpart Katrina Dowd got hot at the right time, assisting here on Brandy Jones's go-ahead goal and adding some insurance of her own to put the Terps back up by two. Carrie Ellen Johnson applied the finishing touch with just over two minutes remaining, after which the Terps were happy to play keep away and let time expire on a 13-11 victory. The Maryland Terrapins, champions once again. Maryland gets NCAA title number 10 in 2010. The Terps once again, national champs. C.J. Costabile came to Duke University knowing he would not get pigeonholed or typecast by the position he played. Long sticks can rip rope too. And there was no better stage to demonstrate that than before 37,000 plus fans at m and Bank Stadium in overtime of the NCAA Division I Men's Lacrosse Championship. Five seconds. That's all it took Costabile to end an otherwise grueling national championship game to penetrate a brick house in Scott Rogers and the brick wall in front of him. Face-off game was a battle the whole day, and my wings, it's, it's just, you know, we were having a little trouble early on, but the last couple of draws, man, they were really doing a great job boxing out and kind of like give me that lane. You know, uh, no name was playing very tight defense on our attackmen, so you know, it kind of parted the Red Sea and took my chance and ended pretty well. 
when it happens, it's just so surreal. You know what I mean? It really, you know, I mean, you think about it, growing up and stuff like that, but you never think that's actually what's gonna happen. Awesome, I mean, it's one of, I, I'm stunned. You know what I mean? It's just really great. I probably, when I get in the locker room, I'll probably settle a little bit more, but right now, it's just like, oh, oh my God. Now Costi Bill has his name etched in lore. With euphoria came closure for the Blue Devils, especially for the fifth year seniors, the last links to the 2006 team that was derailed by rape allegations that ultimately proved false. I hope that our legacy is, you know, in June of this year, we can look back and say, you know, we you know, probably hit the low of the program in 2006 uh, and then the high of it in 2010. And you know, that would be an awesome story. It's absurd. I can't believe I'm wearing this hat. It's like, I, I remember the line I said to you from like the program's ultimate low in 2006, the ultimate high is where I wanted to be, where all of us fifth years did. And this is absurd. It's like, you know, I can't believe it. Duke had come close, losing in national championship games in 2005 and 2007, and with losses the last two years in the Final Four. Members of those teams, including Matt Donowski, Tony McDevitt, Zach Greer, and Brad Ross, celebrated in the glow of this team's crowning achievement. For Matt Donowski, son of Duke head coach John Donowski, it was also a family achievement. I mean, it's, it's not about us at all, but you know, we're so happy just for these guys and for the Duke program. You know. Um, from being where we were in 06 to now, and hey, we had a couple chances at it, but these guys, you know, this is the best team that's ever come through Duke, and uh, they proved it with their national championship, and I couldn't be more happy for these guys. They deserve it. My dad, hey, he's the best coach in the country since 1985, and now he's got the hard way to prove it. Honestly, I just, I was, I was shocked and awed, and I sprinted right towards my dad, and that was really, uh, I mean, jealousy, excitement, and anxiety. I've never been more stressed out than watching these guys in the past Final Four. They're in my life. I've played a ton of games, I've never been more stressed out in my life, so, uh, yeah, you know, I'm just so happy for these guys. They deserve it. It's the best team ever to come through Duke and uh, best team in the country this year. The game tied at every interval leading into the final score saw the Irish take the lead when David Earl fed Sean Rogers to convert a rare fast break. But with 8.44 to play, Duke's Justin Churry took advantage of a rare lapse of Notre Dame's defense and beat Rogers through the five hole to tie it. The Blue Devils had more opportunities in the final minutes but couldn't solve Rogers, the tournament's most outstanding player. The stage was set for C.J. Costabile and the shot that won't soon be forgotten in Durham. Charging toward the net, he scores! It is a storybook ending for the Duke seniors with their first national championship in school history. That does it for season one of Laxfeed. Check out previous episodes at laxmagazine.com or subscribe on iTunes as we look forward to season two.